Okay, sorry I didn't do my Wednesday video again, but to be perfectly straight with you, I've been a little sick. Uh, nothing to worry about. I've got a lot of uh, concerned people. If I'm not out uh, on a regular basis, they, you know, they think something really happened. I appreciate uh, the concern. I appreciate the messages. Um, but we, you know, we all get sick from time to time. This wasn't any kind of, you know big illness but for mm, I'd say three days plus today I've run a pretty good fever kind of achy all over a lot of flu symptoms but without the flu because I haven't really had any congestion so I don't know what it is I mean every so often once or twice a year I just I guess get some nondescript symptom like that and then I'm fine um, so that's it you know I'm okay um, it just you know it just derails me when you when you don't feel good when you're running a fever if you have the opportunity you know you skip work and you just kind of lay around and relax and sleep more than normal and and that's what I was doing now I will also say about videos that we are in the rainy season and for a couple weeks it's rained you know every afternoon and evening pretty much and even a couple mornings and so i haven't uh, i haven't gone out and done videos outside of armenia because i really don't have time i get out there and then you know it starts raining so i've just been kind of avoiding that and staying with more informational things and the the live and of course then i got sick uh, but just to let you know you know, you know it's not that i you know, I have no plans to go to Montenegro, for example. I, I absolutely will. But it doesn't make sense to go through everything I have to go through to be there and then just get rained on. So the rainy season isn't that long. And, that, you know, we're just kind of in the heart of it. It'll be ending this coming month. So in the meantime, I'll fill in with informational topics. And I'll probably go back to some local videos, maybe some more neighborhoods maybe some things that I you know haven't hit on uh, so don't worry about that so what's today about well first I want to let you know I was okay uh, coffee time will still be tomorrow um, but it's time to get a little personal because I keep getting uh, you know I try to address these emails and messages that I get particularly when I receive them again and again and again and this is one that keeps coming up ever since I began doing the videos and people knew that I existed. But it's, it's snowballed because now I'm, you know, I was in Ecuador, now I'm in Colombia. So what is that question? This is actually going to be a combination of questions. You know, why, why did I choose to be here, but why am I in Colombia? I will direct you to look at my past videos go to the channel grand columbia and the first one is a playlist of videos and categories colombia and ecuador if you go to the next tab it says videos and if you click on that it will show every video i've done from the beginning all 420 of them or whatever it amounts to um, I've addressed this in one form or another uh, for quite some time but I've always tried to keep it on a kind of an upper level I try not to get too personal uh, today I'm going to address you know some of my feelings behind my decisions so today I'm going to talk about why I came why I stayed and do I plan to return back to do I plan on going back to the United States well first I'm going to tell you a little about myself because when we all make our decisions 
it really has to do with our personality and what we're looking for, what we can tolerate, what's comfortable for us. When I talk about you know something that's great for me, it really doesn't mean that it's great for you. You're not going to know that until you check it out. I give you my perspective on it, but it's my personality and your personality could be the exact opposite. For example, I really dislike big cities. If you love big cities, then it's everything that I look for and I like, it's probably going to be the opposite. For me, going to Medellin is like a nice weekend trip and I want to get the hell out of there when I'm when I'm done. For you, it might be paradise to live in Medellin and you come to Armenia and it's a nice weekend trip but you want to get the hell out of here. Understand that um, there's no right or wrong. There's no, uh, you know, I'm not lying to you when I tell you something but I'm giving you my take on things because after all it's all I've got, right? So about myself, I am a loner. I would be one of those people that, uh, you know, if we had a flight to Mars and you're going to go alone, like, you know, ground control to Major Tom, you know, and I'm out there and uh, and I have to be alone for, you know, a year and a half, I could do that fine. Many people cannot do that. Many people uh, will start to go crazy after a little while because they need to be socialized. And in truth, that's really the normal human condition. And people, you know, like me, they're not understood by a lot of people. And you, you know, we, you, a lot of people think that, you know, maybe it's a, it's a mental deficiency or an emotional stunted person or something like that. And I, I don't think so at all. I just think that, you know, we all have our, our comfort areas. And for me, I can be by myself in a perfectly comfortable way. And I have to do. I have to tell you that prior to me getting sick and that whole life-changing event, and the two and a half years in bed and three years of illness and three years of recovery, you know, all of that mess. I always needed somebody in my life, or thought I did. I just didn't like a lot of people in my life. So, for example, I could have a wife or a girlfriend, but I didn't want to go to a party with 30 people. And if I did, I just, I got antsy and just wanted to get out of there. So, you know, I've just got that kind of personality that I like to visit with people. You know, even here when um, people come and want to have a coffee and we sit and talk for two or three hours, I thoroughly enjoy it. It's, it's not a burden or a chore for me. But I would be perfectly fine if those things never occurred. There's also a thing about people in general that I have a difficulty in tolerating most people. It's not because, you know, they're necessarily a bad person or whatever. It's just, uh, I, I really like stripped down versions of things. I don't like complications. I don't like drama. I don't like facades. And uh, a lot of people carry that. And, and that's fine. I mean, that's... I've, come to uh, you know realize that that's how most of the world is but I don't have a lot of patience for it you know therefore I can get easily annoyed around people and also uh, I really work hard to know what I'm talking about if it's a topic that I don't know I really try to do my homework I, I try to look at whatever angle there is if it comes to politics I don't you know I've got my set opinions I'll say relatively set but it's based on you know a lifetime of experience but more than that in-depth look at the various points of view various governmental systems you know I I've done deep dives in socialism and communism so when I talk about you know how I thoroughly hate that system I'm not just pulling it off the top of my head it's it's understanding and knowing the history of it you know how it came to be the purpose of it and not the, and not the propaganda of it so when I talk to a lot of people they'll they'll talk from emotion but a shallow depth of knowledge and that just it, it really kind of bothers me because I work so hard to know a topic and if I don't know a topic 
then I'm not going to, you know, sit and, you know, expound on it. I may have an opinion, but I don't know if that opinion is, is valid because I, you know, maybe I haven't uh, looked at that topic enough. And I just, I like to come from that kind of place. And I find that most people really don't. And, and so that, if, if I'm sitting and having a conversation and somebody is telling me about such and such and such, and I can see that they don't know what they're talking about because I know the topic they're talking about and I know it in depth and and what they're really doing is just expressing an opinion without any knowledge behind it. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not sitting here and saying, oh, I'm superior and I'm looking down on everybody and, and, and that's not it at all. I'm just saying that these things are human conditions that annoy me where other people look at that and they say, yeah, so what, it doesn't matter. It, it just, it, it, it bothers me. Uh, maybe that's my weakness to take some of these things to heart. Now the other side of it is I can be very hard to get along with, you know, because of what I just mentioned. And I can come across as being stubborn. You know, for me, I look at it as I've really thought out my ideas and if I, if I know where I stand, then, you know, it's not being stubborn. I mean, if you just love strawberry ice cream, and nobody's really going to convince you that you really should love vanilla instead. You know, you know, you can like vanilla also, but your favorite is strawberry. It's strawberry, and that's it. You know, so you know, my stubbornness comes from like that. Another reason I can be hard to get along with is I'm really kind of blunt, and a lot of people take that as being rude. When I lived in the south part of the United States for a while where there everything is kind of danced around very much like South America when you when you meet somebody you just don't get to the point you dance around in a while how's the family how you feeling weather today blah 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 then after five minutes of the nicety chit chat you know you might get to the point you know maybe it's you know maybe it's the New York influence in me but you know I come up and go directly to the point and I really don't need all that other stuff I don't need that fluff I, I don't even like all that other stuff it that's the social side of it which I'm just not a fan of and so I can come across as being rude I, I don't intend to be rude to anybody but it can come across and the last thing is uh, some people find me difficult to get along with because of my lack of expressed emotions I I try I mean I, you know, I want you to understand, I have feelings just like everybody else. It's not that, I, I joke around about it, you know, I have no feelings and my heart's made of, you know, charcoal. But I'm not affected by a lot of things that many people are, or at least on the outside. Maybe because of, well, not maybe, because of the life that I've led, a lot of, uh, would say a lot of Forrest Gump moments, uh, you know, being in wartime, seeing people, uh, well, you know, seeing the things that you're going to see in that situation. A lot of situations in my life cause me to see the, you know, the raw edge of humanity. And, and so a lot of things don't affect me the same way. I've, maybe it's because I learned a long time ago in order to handle things. It's not like I bury things or don't look at them but I am able to you know put them in a in a place where it's just not going to eat me alive it's it's um, different from hiding because I don't do that I confront whatever is going on with me uh, that bluntness but I don't dwell on things to the point where you know I don't sit and blame myself because a friend died for example where a lot of people are the very first thing is if if only I'd done this and if only I'd done that and I get that again it's a human condition I'm just immune to those kind of things you know for me I look at it as we're all gonna die and and yes it's really sad and it, it'll affect me but I take it for exactly what it is not so long ago the longest friend I've had in my life died and did it affected me. I mean, I went in, it, three things happened at the same time and caused me to kind of spiral into about two months of depression. So don't misunderstand, you know, it's like I'm not a pervious, impervious to these things. 
but I do see them for what they are. Many people don't. Many people need to put up these facades and and uh, need to make excuses for things in life and look at it another way and you know and I tend to be more direct to it so I can be very annoying to people. <sighs> Why did I tell you that? I told you that so you would understand a little bit more about my personality and why I like or choose the things that I like. So why did I come? Now the big question is, is it because uh, the big question why did I come to South America in general or why did I come to Colombia? I'm going to focus more on why I came to Colombia because I've talked, I've done so many videos about being sick and needing to recover and needing to, needing to be away from people uh, you know smothering me I, I needed to get, go to a place um, really in another country with another language where I could I could be alone and there's there not really another option to that where I could kind of figure out what went on and recover and so that was my three years in Ecuador I really needed to sort that out I needed to be alone I needed to isolate myself you know, when you get a death sentence, you know, and, and then you, and you accept it, but then you don't die, it it does leave some remnants, which it goes to show you. I mean, I do have my feelings and emotions; they're there. Uh, they're just maybe not in the usual way. So, you know, that was first reason. Second reason is the time I spent here before, when I came down to Colombia. And I lived in Pereira. Well, actually, it was a place like a suburb of it, part of it, uh, but a separate name is Dos Quebradas. I lived there, and that's where I met my uh, second ex wife, one of the most wonderful people in the world. Jenny, if you ever watch these, hi, I'm doing fine. Uh, amazing family. And while I didn't like Pereira because it's a bigger city, I, it's hard for me to you know precisely put my finger on it but it's it's a city that's just jumbled up it's like everything was put in a bag and they shook it and they dumped it out on the table and that disorder uh, you know it's just kind of bothers me I, I like things a little more orderly uh, but it wasn't just that it's a it's a hot city even though you would think here in Armenia because we're on a similar altitude it should be the same it's not the same it's 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 much hotter there it's a dirty city uh, it, it, to me to my t not like Kali <laughs> but it, it's, I'm just not a fan of the city and, and like all cities there are some wonderful things about it and there's wonderful areas that are very nice there you know so I'm not trying to offend anybody I'm just trying to be straight with how I feel about it but there was something about uh, on weekends when we come out to Armenia or the area around we go to the coffee park or Panaka or you know here in Armenia stop at a roadside chorizo stand and have a cold beer and a, I mean there was something about my visits on those weekends that uh, I really can't put into words beyond saying it felt right. It felt like I was very comfortable. I wasn't a stranger in a strange land. I felt like I was home. It might as well have been upstate New York. I felt very, very comfortable. Even though in those days, there was a lot of danger, which isn't existing here today. Um, I will talk about uh, the, the protests going on tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I think it, you need some perspective on it. But even though there was danger going on back in those days that fortunately don't exist today, I would come out here and I just, I just felt very comfortable. You know, I've mentioned before the, the people, how friendly they are. The, the beauty of this area is just breathtaking. It's, I can't put it in video. You really have to see it yourself. Because when you see it yourself, you're getting the sounds 
instead of just the microphone you're getting the sounds the way they are the smells the fragrances of tropical flowers things going on it, it's really a package that doesn't come across in a video and I'm here to tell you that this area of Colombia this coffee region area particularly uh, Candillo is just one amazing place I've been all over Asia I've been to Europe as you know you know I've been South America North America I've been all over the place uh, Hawaii of uh, Okinawa which is like another little Hawaii this place stands up to the best it, it's just stunning you know the greenery just gives you uh, me I just love greening. I mean, people that like to go and, you know, play in the desert, it's great for them. I don't get it. Uh, I don't understand it the least. I've, I've been to deserts. They're called deserts for a reason. I mean, they're, it's, I, I, I don't like it. I certainly wouldn't want to live around those. I don't even like to visit places like the desert. I don't like to go to places that are excessively hot and muggy. I mean, why? It's not, it's not fun. Here, it's just got it all. You've got this this great weather. You've got this greenery. Yes, we get some rain, but it's all controllable and manageable. It's it's nothing crazy, but it, it, the result of it is this amazing greenery, great fresh water that just never ends. It's just a if if there's a Garden of Eden, I'm probably living in it. And the last thing on, on this little list is the sense of freedom. I, it, it was an overwhelming feeling um, years ago when I came here, even with all the crazy stuff that was going on, that being here, I just felt so free. Again, one of these things, it's a concept and a feeling that it's hard for me to put into words so you can feel it. Uh, that's you know it's just my failure with the language but uh, I, I can just tell you that I have a sense of freedom here that I just love as a matter of fact I felt it so much back then that I actually spent some time going out and looking at different houses because on the back of my mind I had this idea maybe one day you know I'll retire and this is such an amazing place wouldn't it be awesome to come here and live? You know, not to mention the cost of living. So I looked at some amazing houses, extremely affordable. And sitting in the Garden of Eden, I mean, who wouldn't dream about that? And I felt this freedom that was maybe a little strange because a lot of people here at that time felt almost depressed when they went out because because of all the things that were going on with the revolutionaries the FARC the narcos and all of that because those things w were existing uh, for example my ex-wife we would go out and she would have her bag and she would clutch it across her chest there was a certain level of fear that somebody was going to get mugged they were going to steal something from you something bad was going to happen and I never had that those feelings it wasn't because I wasn't aware of what was going on I think it's partly because I'd been in such dangerous areas before that the in perspective for me it just didn't it didn't feel all that bad I I don't know um, I don't want this video to be three hours long but uh, I felt a sense of freedom and I never felt that kind of foreboding and like I say, it wasn't out of ignorance. I get where they were coming from. It's just that level of fear maybe I had con conquered years ago. And so I didn't have a problem with it. So why did I stay? Well, when I was in Ecuador, I decided uh, to visit Colombia. It's like, why didn't I go directly to Colombia? Well, again, that's something I've addressed, addressed a number of times why I didn't go directly to Colombia. I was not healthy enough and I didn't realize how much Colombia had changed and how much safe and secure it was. Back when I was healthy and fit and strong and could take care of myself, 
it, it didn't phase me to be here, but I pictured that same Columbia as fat and no energy and no muscle tone after being in bed for a couple years coming here and I would not be able to take care of myself and you just don't put yourself in untenable situations and I just felt that that wouldn't be the brightest thing to do well so I, I go to Ecuador being close to the place that I love thinking well maybe it's it's gonna be like that well it's actually nothing like Colombia and Ecuador are worlds apart but I go there and I decide after a year, well, yeah, a little over a year, I decide to come back to Columbia and check it out. Well, I came back and I, that's when I realized uh, maybe I should have done my homework a little bit better on Columbia. Um, I realized how drastically Columbia has changed. And so I made a trip for about 10 days, went back, made another trip and over the course of a couple years I made a total of seven trips of about seven to fourteen days a week to two weeks typically around ten days always coming to the Armenia area uh, with the exception I went up to Manizales to visit someone so I learned that Colombia was the same as it was before as far as the people and the beauty and the freedom, the feeling of freedom, all those things still existed. It's just the danger is what was gone. And when I came back, those memories and emotions that I had before, the feelings, the sensation, the elation of being here, it all returned. It, it returned. And it wasn't one of those cases where, you know, sometimes, you know the way you remember something and you go back and visit it and maybe you shouldn't have gone back because it's really not the way you remembered it you remembered it you put it on such a high level that you go back and just doesn't live up to it and you're actually faced with a bit of a disappointment you know maybe when you were a kid you went to a place that was so big and spectacular and you go back as an adult and it just wasn't nearly as big and spectacular as what you remembered so I come back to Colombia and all those feelings, emotions returned and it was every bit as much of the same feelings that I had when I was here before. It was every bit as much as beautiful as I remembered it being. And living here, it continues to be more than I imagined. It's better than I remembered it. But I've spent more time here than I did before. It's like every day it's like a new door opens it's like oh my god i try to give you a sense of those things as they come along and you know in videos i don't know um, some things are so intangible they're really hard to explain they're hard to get across but i'm pouring myself out here in this video and telling you that a lot of me being here is this feeling that i carry about freedom about my well-being about uh, this positive energy, this this beautiful uh, landscape that I'm surrounded with, the greenery and the water, it's it's um, it's very fulfilling for me. So after all those trips to Colombia, and then I moved here, I went to Manizales for about three months, and I've been here for just over a year now. Uh, my apartment lease ended a week or so ago we renewed it without without a contract I'm just staying here in total in Colombia about two years so it's not like you know all the experience of the world but doing these videos I get out and meet people and do things that you know if you come here you you may not do in 10 years so I think I have a pretty good sense of it just like I did in Ecuador my biggest supporters in Ecuador were Ecuadorians because even though some things they didn't like uh, that I would show in the videos, it, they respected that it was honest and, and valid. And, and so I have a pretty good sense. So I'm not operating out of uh, fantasy or, you know, blind to things. You know, so why, why did I stay? Well, it's the positive vibes. Indescribable but to step out the door and just be greeted with friendliness and smiles and again keep in mind that all of this i'm talking about armenia 
this area of Candillo, the coffee, the triangle, which actually is four cities, figure that one out, but the coffee triangle is unique in Colombia. And while I may love where I'm living, there's many places in Colombia that I would never care to live. And there's places that I actually despise. Uh, there are places I just, I would not go, don't want to go. There's some areas that are dangerous. You know, Colombia is like, uh, like you think of it like the United States. You know, you might go to the Grand Canyon and it's spectacular, but then you might go to Compton and go, oh my God, get me out of here. You know, and if you're living in Compton, I'm sorry, but that's, you know, it, it's a shock to the system to go there or, you know, parts of Detroit or Chicago or you know, th places like that. It doesn't mean that in Montana it's not this amazing uh, vista of beauty or upstate New York and Niagara Falls and the Finger Lakes and the Thousand Islands. You know, so the United States is full of all of these things and some places they're ugly, some places the water's nasty, and some places it's very dangerous. In other places you can leave your doors unlocked and you you know people are always going to be caring and kind. So the United States isn't one thing, it's everything. It's the entire spectrum. And Colombia is very much like that. And I think it's important to remember those things. And I'm talking about my little corner of the world in Armenia, and that's what it's like for me. So I get these positive vibes. I walk out and I see these, these kind, helpful people every day doing actual acts of kindness for people. It, it's the norm here. It's, it's unusual, but it's a wonderful thing to be around. There's a level of honesty and integrity in this area. And I'm not saying everybody's honest and, you know, and it's like, I would be foolish to say that because everybody's not honest. And, you know, just like anywhere, um, when you're traveling or thinking of moving to another country, you always need to keep this in mind. There's no all or everything. You have your variations just like where you are from. So here you've got people that are going to try to take advantage of you, like anywhere. But it's a small, small part of the population. What I have found is that honesty and integrity are cherished and admired traits here. And so I find people to be very honest and have a lot of integrity for the most part. And I like that. Where I'm from in upstate New York, it's very much like that. As a matter of fact, if you're not like that, you're kind of ostracized, you know, and you live in a, it, when people live in an area of a, a community for a long time and everybody gets to know everybody, you know, you know the bad apples and they really kind of need to move along because, you know, other people aren't going to tolerate that kind of thing. And here in Armenia, there's, there's a bit of that that goes on. Reputation has, has a lot of value here. And why did I say, of course, I mentioned I mentioned quite a bit about the the weather. Uh, it's it's a very temperate climate. It's it, through much of the year. It's in the 70s uh, for a, for a few months. The summer here, it does get get up into the 80s, but it never gets you know 90s and you're sweltering. And I've mentioned all you know about the breezes that go on. So it's I'm always comfortable. I think in the past year there might have been one or two days where it was a little warm for my taste. Well, hey, you know, if you're living in a place for 365 days and only two of those days is a little too warm, I'll take it. It's never too cold and it's, it's almost never too warm. So for me, it's really that kind of a sweet spot. Would I like it if we're three or four degrees cooler? Sure, I would. And if I go to Manizales, I could have that maybe even five or six degrees cooler you know, on average. But there's trade-offs there that I prefer what's here as a package. For weather, maybe you want Manizales. On the other hand, the rain isn't quite as predictable as it is here. And I really like that. I like that um, I can kind of work with what's going on every day. Right now the sun's out and it's bright and sunshiny and every day I see the sun. So even if we have rain every day, I'm still also seeing the sun. 
in upstate New York, we could go two, three months where the sky was gray and you didn't even know the sun existed. So, you know, another thing that I love about here, why I stay. And here in Armenia, within an hour, it's like the whole world is out there. There's so many places to go, so many things to do within an hour of transportation. And what's an hour of transportation? You know, we're talking about 30 mile radius. There's so much, there's so much variety, so many interesting things to do. You know, I just love that. And of course the cost of living, you can't beat it. I mean, it's, it's basically here in Armenia, it's about 25% of what your cost of living in the United States is. That's just kind of a rule of thumb it's you know going to vary somewhat but it's very cheap to live here it's cheaper than it's cheaper than living in ecuador it's cheaper than living in other parts of colombia it's very inexpensive here and you can you can live okay thousand bucks uh it's not going to be extravagant you're not going to live like a king but you're going to have everything that you need you're going to have a pretty good life on a thousand bucks uh, not a lot of places where you can say that legitimately. A lot of people say, oh, you know, come here and live in Cuenca, Ecuador for $600 a month, and they're lying to you. Or it's a type of lifestyle that you just really would never live because you might as well be dead. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm talking about living a normal life, having a nice apartment, going out for dinner once in a while, uh, you know, paying for your transportation, entertainment, travel to local areas those things are really very inexpensive the availability of things is really nice i mean i just i needed more things for my osmo camera uh, i'll do i'll do an update on that camera i love the camera but what they don't tell you is how many things you need to get to make it work right about the filters that you really have to have for it about the different case that you've got to have if you put the thumb wheel on which you also have to have okay we're not doing that video now so i go to amazon and i order up these things and i paid 96 cents on 115 dollars i paid 96 cents for the government tax to to import it here what would that have been in ecuador you know it would have probably doubled it, it would have made my order you know 200 and some if i could order it so many things you can't even get in ecuador through amazon there are some restrictions here but if you know two places won't ship here there's three more that will so so far everything that i've needed i've been able to get my hands on through amazon which is nice and what i do is i'll compare it to the cost here in some cases um it's i've it's cheaper here to just go get it in other cases it's better just to order on amazon with these things um, it was just easier and cheaper to just order on amazon the sd card for example cost me eleven dollars for a 64 uh, video quality the, the high end where here those are actually very expensive cards the regular ones are cheap but for the high-end video hc uh, number 10 whatever they are um, those are 30 30 some dollars i got it for 11 dollars with no no import tax so i digress in ecuador there are many things that simply were not available so you just give up on them and it's okay i mean you can be so happy with what's going on in your life that hey having a good cheddar cheese really you know it's like it's not it's not the end of the world but here there's really no compromise whatever it is that you want to have if i want to go buy uh egyptian count uh wonderful silky feeling sheets i can go buy those could i in ecuador well there was one store uh, you know catering to um, rich people if you want to spend a couple hundred dollars for a set of sheets we're here those same sheets are about 30 bucks similar to in the u.s so that's part of availability too is is the cost reasonable i don't think 200 dollars for a set of sheets is reasonable therefore it's unavailable to me so here pretty much everything is available
And the last part of this, I'm asked all the time, it's like, are you going to return to the United States? Because I've expressed many times that I, I think the United States as a whole is probably the best country on the planet. And that's for a whole range of reasons. And keep in mind, Armenia is not a country. Armenia is part of a country. So as a whole, um, I take the United States as the best place on the planet. And that's with a lot of experience visiting a lot of places. And so the question comes up, if you feel that way, you know, are you going to return? And I have no plans to return because all these feelings that I have here, I don't want to break that up. I don't want to walk away from it. I, I don't want to, even if I walk away and return, I don't want to. I just don't want to leave where I am. Yeah, I may go so far as to um, this next year, as I, I mentioned before, I plan to go to Santa Marta in some outlying areas. I'll probably even make a trip to Medellin, do a video there about something that people don't seem to cover. So I'll probably do that, but I'm not that far from where I am. And, and I know that I'll go out and do those things and come back and I'll feel that oh, I'm home. It's so good to be home. Kick your shoes off and kick back and I just feel the, the, the vibes and the atmosphere. So while I'm, I would consider myself a patriotic person, I mean, I served over six years in the Marine Corps. If I hear this, the uh, national anthem, I'm gonna put my hand over my chest. So with all the flaws it has, best place on earth, I still choose to be here. I just feel so content. I feel happy here. It's, it's like a never ending happiness. I do try to avoid, you know, any kind of negativity in my life, uh, where in the U.S. it's a little more difficult to do, but I just feel so much more freedom here. The affordability is a bonus. It wasn't my goal. Uh, it did come in handy. Times got tough for a few months, but, you know, I weathered the storm and, and that's fine. But that wasn't my goal. You got to be happy in the place you are, even if it costs you a little more. It just so happens that I find that peace of mind and comfort here where it just so happens to be that much less expensive. Hey, that's a bonus. So I have no plans to leave. I have no plans to leave whatsoever. When you find a place that long term gives you what you need, you have no need to look at elsewhere. So. I'm not one of those videographers that's going to go from country to country to country. I've found what would drive me to do that, what has driven me to do that. Partly of why I've gone to so many different places in this world. And I found it. And I don't need to be elsewhere. I did this interview with this couple that traveled for a year throughout Central and South America and ended up living not far from here. Um, you know, they had been here, left, went elsewhere, and realized that they had already been to what they were looking for, returned and settled down here, bought their house, and, you know, living a very nice life. They're still traveling outside, they're still going to places, but this is their home, this is their base, and and that's how I feel about it. So even if I, even if I were to travel somewhere, there's no place like home, and I'm living home. I hope that answers you. Um, see you tomorrow at coffee time.